I play with energy. I feed off of energy. Just to be going out there and just putting on the show. I listen to my grandfather's music before every day. Just soothe me out. This is what I gotta do. I miss a hip seed. Movement of your people, yeah. Let me tell you, in the movement of your people. Love of sports came from my grandfather, I believe. He loved soccer, you know. I guess if he wasn't a musician, he'd probably be a soccer player. I guess that got passed down to my father. Yes. If thanks, brother Jojo. Yeah. <laughs> man, always, when Jojo play, man, man touch my heart string, you know? <laughs> The story of Nico Marley and his father and grandfather is a story of redemption. We hear Bob Marley's music and we think instantly of uh, the positive vibrations and the gold records and the international influence. But we miss uh, the struggle that he went through as a youth. The gunman who survived, many have grinding third world poverty that he emerged from. It comes from a spirit of never backing down. It's the way that Rohan Marley began his football career, under-respected. And then, you know, Nico is kind of a chip off of that same, that same block. But none of us can understand what it's like to be named Marley unless you're within that skin. No one wants to be the Marley that fails. Yeah, we're at 56 Hope right now, Bob Marley Museum. This is where everything as children started for us. Getting to know our father, his way of life and the principles. This is the house where everything began. It's a pleasure to um, have Nico here because he hasn't been here since he's like nine years old. <laughs> so so it's, a it's a great pleasure to have my sons here. What? You got to <laughs> To see the boys in the yard. Grew up in Spanish Town, being Bob Marley's son. There's not too much privilege. <laughs> you don't hear about Nico, you don't hear any no issues of Nico. <laughs> I was considered, you know, one of the rude boys, Bob Marley's rude son, you know. <laughs> I go to America, right, and I enter into the sixth grade in America. What's popular is the Miami Dolphins, 1984, when Mark Clayton, Mark Dupa, Dan Marino. I started to take a liking on the football, like I started to really like the game. Rohan, who was a little bit more American than, than Bob Marley, than his father, fell in love with football. So that was his athletic call. You know, we, we were a clinic at Miami. A uh, badass bunch of dudes that came in and danced on your field and kick your ass. Period. I met Rohan Marley in 1991. We were in the same recruiting class at the University of Miami. First impression was, are you kidding me? Such as being five foot eight, small by any football standard, but he makes up. You know, we talk about football. It's a five foot eight guy that 
200 some pounds. And when he decided he was coming from safety, he was gonna play linebacker. We all looked and said, hey man, you gotta be crazy. And he's like, listen, I gotta be close to the line. <laughs> I, 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 I gotta hit him. <laughs> now, oh my God, did he hit him. If I'm the small X and you're the big tree, I'm gonna chop you down. I'm gonna bring that fire to you. It was the funniest thing to watch this little man knock the hell out of big people. I mean, just. I still can see him now. Come on, little buddy. And that's what he always called me, little buddy. I mean, I'm towering over him. Come on, little buddy, let's go play today. I mean, there was always a passion about it. Well, I got to say it came from my brought up and my upbringing here in Jamaica. And you're a little boy, but you still have to be responsible and be man enough that you can hold your own. Being able to defend your, your rights as a human being. And then we translate that into football. PJ. <laughs> My good friend Ray Lewis and I, we went to see Nico, I, I don't know, was it Pop One or some little game he had? <laughs> when he's, every move he made, he was in the backfield. Ray told me, Ro, we're going to be hearing about Nico. First of all, is his smarts. Um, he was really a student of the game. He's intelligent, he's quick, he's strong. He's filled with energy. He looked just like his daddy. I mean, she can destroy missile. I'm 5'8", I play linebacker. People expect a 5'8 linebacker. Well, they don't expect a 5'8 linebacker, so he said. In his sophomore year, he started asking me, you know, about college. So I tried to tell him the reality of it. If you read any newspaper stories about him, you'll see how it went. He got one Division I offer, and it was from Tulane. I was in Coach Rollins' office, and he showed me this kid. He was like, do you like this kid? And then every time I see him, he was hitting somebody. I'm like, yeah, I like this dude. I just thought he was a hitting machine. He hit everything, he's a great tackler. He was like, that's Bob Marley grandson. I was like, man, I, I like that kid. We need him. I know going to college that uh, they're not thinking that he's gonna play. They're thinking they're gonna redshirt him. Yeah, it's always hard to start a freshman, you know, you guys who don't, you, who never played before, but after the first scrimmage, he just made too many plays. You know, we knew then that we had something very special. Uh, he's, he's kind of a quiet guy, he kind of stays to himself, but he voices opinion about certain things like music in the locker room. He's like, y'all listen to this trash, you know? You know, his enthusiasm when he brought to the team was one of the reasons why we went to the bowl game last year. Nico led them to their first bowl game in more than 10 years. I think there are other schools that are regretting right now that they didn't take that chance. This is where the blood is, you know, this is my father's blood, sweat, and tears right out of here, you know? Really a humbling experience to know where it all started, seeing where my grandfather grew up, where my father grew up, just knowing he wasn't born a legend. That yeah, my father has given his all to humanity, his blood, sweat, and tears every day when he performed, when he lived his life, every day was based on him doing more for people. A lot of people want something from the Marlies, particularly here in Jamaica. Uh, it is still an impoverished nation. 
and Marley's put things in those people's hands many times. But it's an ongoing struggle to, to deal with that. The responsibility of being Bob's son still, regardless of what you have or who you are, where you are, the responsibility of being a Marley is like you, you can't hide from yourself. You know what I mean? Baby stages, the baby stages. <laughs> Look at that. Can you imagine how much work goes into this? A brethren said to me, you know, Rowan, there's a nice farm in Portland that I think belongs in the Mali family. I said, Do you know anything about coffee? <laughs> they said, Mr. Marley, we've been farming coffee all our lives. I said, all right, we're in the coffee business. <laughs> Coffee came about from an, from an inspiration that I got deep within myself, being Bob Marley's son, and saying to myself, what am I going to do? You have all this teaching, you have all this goodness, you know you gotta be able to continue it. And still have that passion, you know, that's still that drive like you see on the football field. Farming is, is patience, of course, because you don't know what the elements you're going to face coming in the coming years. It's like a child, and it's how you nourish a child, and how you treat a child, the child will grow from that. And this is what this is. We're now a fully certified organic farm. Oh, Jesus. I want this to touch all corners of the world, you know? during the week, be like, yo, you run the beach? Always talking about running the beach. That's a tradition, you know, you learn that from your father. Hey, boy. This is why I come to the beach when I was a little boy. This is why I used to come to the Father pick you up, going to the beach. You're not going to the beach to swim. You're going to the beach to run. The common thread that connects the three generations is this spirit for which I can't really find a word. It's my job to find the words for these things, but I can't, and it's something intrinsic within them. Passion, really. I think it's more passion that makes us do what we do. Making people proud, making something for myself, having a foundation, doing it as my father and my grandfather did it. I want Nico to continue to excel in, in school, but I also want him to enjoy his passion, love what he's doing and have fun, and take it from there. Nico Marley has a chance of getting into an NFL camp or a rookie camp, you know, a few years in the future. I think, uh, you know, he's going to force them to give him a look. We have to have tangible hopes. And once you have tangible hopes, we can make those hopes become reality. You know, that's why we come from 56 Hope Road. Hope Road, man. You hear Bob Meyer say, Hope Road, this is Hope Road, where hopes and dreams are fulfilled. Let's get together and feel alright. One love. One heart, give them some